At more than 80 feet tall, Prosciutti Coney's Judas is the largest clay statue ever created. The work is a triumph of form over function, sitting as it does alone atop a simple oven-baked wall in the church of St. Jerome of Pulivar. Prosciutti Coney's Judas is an enigma. Is he reading the newspaper in his hands, or does he merely appear to read? This is Prosciutti Coney's nod to Neo-Plato-ism, which says the soul can only be found by not ever looking for it. In this illusory moment of profound introspection, the ordinary act of reading a newspaper becomes a metaphor for the act of not reading a newspaper. As a young boy in his native Venice, Prosciutti Coney delighted in creating etchings of the urban marmots who lived along the canals. When he later turned to sculpture, his sharply contoured and sinuous lines were influenced by the Florentine school of neoplasticism. In 1679, his controversial doge's wife giving obscene gesture cost him his sponsorship from the Medici family. Angry and disillusioned, Prosciutti Coney accepted a commission from the daughter of Pope Cosimo III. His challenge? To create a work more inventive than da Vinci, more powerful than Michelangelo. His creation, Judas. The enigmatic smile is clearly reminiscent of the Mona Lisa, and yet Judas's head can be seen to foreshadow cubism with its geometrical form and subdued color. Judas is unique in that it is Prosciutti Coney's only completed sculpture. He was known to have had an extremely short attention span and would often become bored before adding arms and legs to his works. Prosciutti Coney rejected the extreme religious connotations given to his Judas, saying that the work conveyed an emotional rather than mystical meaning. It is this juxtaposition of neoclassical realism with pre-post-Raphaelite expressionism that was the essence of Prosciutti Coney's genius. Response to Judas was lukewarm at best. Disconsolate and broke, Prosciutti Coney returned to the subject he loved best, marmots, until his death in 1692. But Prosciutti Coney will always be remembered for his crowning achievement, Judas, moment of betrayal. In our next program, we will examine the timeless minimalism of Benozzo Rizzoli. I'm Nicholas Hirschenbaum, curator of the Emanuel Adebayor Center for Renaissance Studies in South Florida.